Hello lovely friends, thank you so much for being here today. Today's video is a super special collaboration with some amazing artists and friends. We've got really, really fun flip cup landscape pour with all kinds of mixed media. So I'm super excited to introduce the wonderful Kathleen from Cos Creations. After a recent art class, the tag team and I got together with Kathleen and we're excited to show you our landscape pours today and really hope that you enjoy it with us. We learnt so much about the flip cup technique that we're itching to go and try something new. So I'm just starting off here today with the colours. This is the painting from the original class. So I'm starting off with these sunset colours and you can see how high pigmented these colours are. They're from Golden, Nartesa and Pebio. And I'm doing the drip test there and you can see just how runny it is coming off the page. So it's really interesting to compare this with my normal pouring medium and how I normally pour. So we've put the frog tape down the middle and that's for the horizon. So this video was several hours long and I reduced it down to 19 minutes. So I've done my best to edit it for you and I hope it's really clear. So I'm starting off um, just trying to replay what happened in the class. So we had the canvas, we split it in half for the horizon line and initially I'm just using my paint to tilt and I was told by Kathleen you need to tilt it directly one way or the other because at the beginning I was just tilting it anyway which felt right it's really important and it made a real difference when you actually tilt it straight forward, straight to the side or straight to the other side according to what the paint is doing. So we mix up our paint today and you can see quite a few air bubbles in there and it's such a learning um, about the flow of paint, about the pouring medium. We all mixed our paints together and the pouring medium was what I usually do which is 50% pouring medium and 50% paint so I was fairly okay with the consistency and it was lovely doing a drip test um, beforehand just to all compare and it's so lovely being in a class with friends and, and looking at what they're doing and, and how they're doing it it's very different in a group isn't it so as I tilt off this top area here I'm just really aware that I'm going to try and show you as close up as I can each part of the process oh, and that is going to be the top of the horizon and the base for the flip cup so I'm just going to make sure that all the paint is down the sides just using my fingers to gently dip it in the paint and tease it down so now I'm going to layer up the colors in the cup to do the flip and what we're hoping for is some amazing cell action and beautiful paint movement. So we'll have to see what you think is going to happen. Look at those gorgeous colours layering, really strong colours. And we went for lighter at the top and then gradiating it down according to the seam we wanted to create. Here's the flip cup and it's down. Now then. This is more of a travelling cup and it's my first attempt and I'll show you how I did it the second time which is the correct way of doing it. Um, I intuitively did it as a, as a travelling cup but you can see it's still a lovely result and look at those colours as they're coming together. With a flip cup and I've now got paper cups, when you flip it over and this is the second layer you put that pin in it and it's so much easier doing it with a paper cup. See a plastic one, you see that it creased a little bit. Still worked, but it's just not as easy. And that's all part of experience, isn't it? As you go along, you try something new and you learn something. So I'm now tilting this off. And this is going to become the water um, and the, the most 3D area, that red bit. Now, I wasn't happy with the top, so I tried putting some Arteza red, tried mixing it in um, and then I took off the frog tape to then do the horizon line. Now this was really tricky because one of the things I was thinking before this collaboration or before the art class was how on earth do you get all of the paint still and then you do the horizon and then you do the bits below. 
but it's because the paint has already settled and then you have to be really careful and you do other things later on to level it up. So then I'm just, just literally now putting in the rest of the sunset colours, going with what felt right. And at this stage, I didn't know where the sun was going to be or you know what was going to be happening. Now, what I love about this technique is the swiping and the blending and how much fun that was. When you're bringing the paper towel, which is very, very lightly dampened with a spray across the canvas, you're blending it slightly and you can go backwards and forwards several times until you're happy with the blending. And it was so lovely having Kathleen say, oh, you need to stop here and what about this? And having someone present when you're doing your work is just amazing. And then I'm just scrapping this bit. I didn't like it from the beginning. There's something about the fact that it just didn't look right and now it feels so much better. And I've got an idea of what I'm gonna do with that bottom piece now. I'm gonna texture it. Now the painting has dried. As I just lay the frog tape along the canvas, I'm getting an idea of where the horizon is gonna be. So I'm just speeding up now and I'm using my mixed modeling paste with my Amsterdam black. And I'm using a nice rounded brush just to finish off that horizon. And now I'm peeling off the frog tape and can you see how clean that line is? Totally loved that tip from Kathleen and it made all the difference revealing this next stage of the painting. Kathleen is one of the very first artists who inspired me on my acrylic pouring journey and I'm very excited for today. And the art class was just a dream. So using a brush, I'm just filling in that middle section to make it more solid. And I'm creating a few mountains in the background. And later on, as this painting develops, you'll be able to see how the sun suddenly comes up from behind the mountains. And at this stage, I'm thinking, I'm going to draw a tree. So the painting is dried. just some finishing touches here now and just really enjoy just looking at the painting as a whole deciding where the sun's going to be slightly off center where the tree is going to be and how i'm going to bring out the water below the mountains and how i'm going to make the sunset brighter at the top adding a bit of gold and using a paintbrush to blend it all in so now I'm using my hand to use some of the permanent orange where the sun's going to be. And I'm using some gold and I'm loving this bit, just getting my hands in the paint. Just reminds me of making mud pies when I was a little one. So you can see just where the sunrise, sunset's going to be. The funny thing is it could be a sunrise. It's a very, very slight difference. So I'm just using some of the paint now to intuitively go where I want the lighter parts and where I feel that the sun's gonna come through the tree later on. Now this modeling paste mixed together with Amsterdam black was pasted all over the bottom to give it some texture. And it went on really nicely. And later on, I'll be painting over that once it's dried. So there's quite a few stages to this painting, aren't there? Just use a scoop of the modelling paste, just enough just to go along the bottom. And I'm just using the end and the edge of a paintbrush just to form the ridges, just to give it a little bit of texture wherever it feels right. Just filling it in. And every, every minute that I'm doing this, I'm just looking at the water and wondering how I'm going to get that to be 3D. And it was a complete discovery. In a moment, I'll be showing you the stencil to create the sun. So I literally get some frog tape or some duct tape and I'm prepping the stencil by putting it around it. You can use that sticky gel that you put on the underside of the stencils, but I find that duct tape seems to do quite a good job. Now, I was really curious about the sun 
and how it was going to be coloured in. So I looked back on one of Kathleen's videos and absolutely loved it. So you can just see there, I just filled in the paint on the texture bit once it was dried. Now then, once the stencil was down, I'm using sponge, dipping it in the orange and pretty much going all over the sunrise. The frog tape is, if you can notice, halfway across the stencil and it's in alignment with where the mountains are because the sun's going to be behind the mountains. I'm really gently using that sponge. And I've got a bit of gold in there as well, so I'm alternating, alternating between the gold and the orange. And it's all while it's wet. And the moment I'm going to take the white and do a bit of shadowing on the sun. So I'm taking off the stencil. You can see already it's beginning to form, so I've got a bit of paint there. So just you could always just take, get a little damp cloth and wipe away anything that's in the way. Now that's my rigger brush, absolutely beautiful brush there. And that's what I'm going to be using to do the tree and the fine parts of the sun. See, it's almost outlining the sun there. I absolutely love doing this part, and when the tree starts forming, that was something I haven't done before. I haven't done a sun before, and I haven't done a tree before, so it was all very exciting. And I'm looking at it now and thinking, this was a flip cup painting. And this is how you can develop your paintings. Also, if you don't like a painting, but you like the colours, so for example, you don't like the pattern, you can use that as a background and you can start to paint on top of it. So now we're going to put a bit more detail in and you can just see that from the bottom part, I wanted to bring that up a bit and make that grass effect on the bottom so I've used a paintbrush just literally just using it very very gently to create grass so what I've got here is three little stickers just to give me a central point for the center of the tree at the top of the trunk I'm using the rigger brush to paint the trunk in and you'll watch now as the tree develops. Now initially I wanted the tree to go over the sun and I look back on it and I'm thinking that's not too realistic is it? So um, I brought the branches down. I haven't shown that bit right at the end but I'm going to leave you for a little while now as you watch the tree develop and you see the last bits of the tree and the different tools that I use to create the tree. And I'll come back shortly.
Looking at you, thought you were looking at me. Turns out I was wrong. You said I wasn't, but let's agree to disagree. She tells me all of these things about how you were so sweet, but I know because you said the same. So as the tree is almost finished, this is showing you the tools and the rigger brush as I add the gold and the bronze to the tree and the extra bits of grasses and the highlights, the grass that I started to do. Can you see just around the tree at the bottom and how it came to life? So I'm literally using the rigger brush and highlighting with the red and the gold. Now this has been an absolute first experience for me and I've loved the outcome, I've loved the process, I'm all about process. Can you see the gold highlighting the trunk there? And I'm using a bit of TLP picky at the end to do some of the, it was a mango uh, TLP and I'm using that to bring the light through the tree. And the camera doesn't do it justice, but the gold and the mango highlighted it so beautifully. I just got carried away in the end with the gold highlights. And I did enjoy the fact that these touch-ups brought out the 3D effect in the water. You can almost not tell whether it was a flip cup or an acrylic pour now towards the end. Um, so these, this was a really exciting project today and I loved developing it and it's just been an exciting painting thank you so much to kathleen of cos creations you've been an absolute inspiration you've excited us all and you've brought us along with you on this landscaping journey i've learned so much from you and i can't thank you enough thank you so much and thank you to the tag team thank you to august and tonya for being in the class thank you to lovely kathy all of you are great friends love you lots and if you haven't been to see the rest of the people in this collaboration today, go and check out their channels. They're amazing. The details are in the playlist, in the comments below and in the description. So to you, my viewers, I'm forever grateful. Happy creating. Have a lovely day. Take care. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye.